This is Jeremy from the Artifacts Forge and in this tutorial I'm going to explain how to create an authentic looking fabric patch design in Affinity Designer using my Patchworks Fabric Badge Maker. The pack features loads of textures and a few brushes all of which have been sourced from genuine fabric patches. It also includes a set of shapes which you can use as the base for your design. So I'm going to start with one of those shapes. So all I'm going to do is copy the shape into my document and then I'm going to position it in the center like so. Now, as you can see, I've already divided my design into four sections and I'm going to start with the top left hand corner and I'm going to add four squares. So I'm using the rectangle tool and I'm holding on the shift key and I'm clicking and dragging like so. Now I'm going to duplicate this square by holding down the Alt key and dragging. And I'm going to turn on snapping up here, which helps position the squares properly. So I am just doing a couple more there. And I'm going to recolor these two slightly so we can see the difference here. I'm just scaling that up slightly, like so. And I'm just going to align these because they don't seem to have aligned properly. Now I'm going to duplicate one of these squares by holding down the Alt key and dragging again. And I'm going to upscale it, so I'm holding the Shift key and pulling out from the edge there. Now I'm going to use the corner tool here and I'm going to add corners and to start with I'm just using the default rounded corner which you can see selected here but I'd actually like to use this concave corner so I'm just going to click the button there and as you can see it turns into a sort of four pointed star. I'm just going to scale that down slightly Again, holding the shift key as I do so to keep it in proportion. On the bottom left, I'm going to add some five pointed stars. And as you can see, the star tool here is set to five points. So I'm again going to hold the shift key down and clicking and dragging like so. Now I want to adjust the star slightly. So I'm going to convert it to curves by clicking this button. And then I'm going to use the node tool to readjust these points very slightly. The next step is to duplicate the star by holding down the Alt key and dragging. And then we can do the same. So we have three instances of the stars. I'm just going to shrink them down very slightly. going to align them just like that. In the bottom right hand section I'm going to add some diagonal stripes using the pen tool. I'm going to start by creating horizontal lines um, which I will then rotate by minus 45 degrees. So I'm clicking once and holding on the shift key and clicking again and then I'm holding the alt key down and just duplicating the stripes and I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to align them and distribute them vertically ensuring all the spacing is even. Now I've just grouped those and then I am going to go to the transform panel and I'm rotating them by 45 degrees, actually minus 45 degrees there. Now don't worry that all of these shapes overlap at the moment. We're going to expand the strokes so that they're fills and then we're going to edit them. And to do that, We've got them all selected and we're going 
to go to layer and expand stroke. And as you can see, they become fills. Now, with snapping enabled, I'm going to take the node tool and I am going to just quickly remove all the sections here, which I don't need. And you don't need to be super neat about this because I'm going to be placing an outline over the top, which is going to cover the edges up anyway. And that's the basic vector design. And the next step is the fun bit. We're going to add a brush border and also apply some of the textures. So to apply the brush border, we're going to duplicate the main badge shape. And then we're going to bring it to the top and we're going to swap the stroke and fill over so that you have a stroke around the outside and the fill is transparent. Now I'm going to go to the brushes panel and we're going to select one of the closed brushes. It's worth noting at this stage that there's a supplied both a closed and an open brush. The closed brush is for closed shapes and the open brush is for shapes where you see edges. So we're going to use one of the closed brushes here. Now you'll see that this looks quite odd. This is not how it's designed to look. So you need to go to the stroke panel and tick this box here, scale with object. And as you can see, it looks much, much better. Now I'm just going to scale it down a little and I'm going to adjust the colors. There's a limit to the colorization that you can do by coloring the stroke on these brushes. So to adjust the color further, we're going to add an adjustment layer. And to do that, making sure we have our layer selected, we go to the layer menu and go to new adjustment and I'm going to use recolor. Now it defaults to this saturated red. So we are going to knock the saturation back move the hue over to the yellow color there and she will up the saturation actually because that's not that nice and then we're going to change the lightness slightly and this doesn't have to be perfect because the great thing about adjustment layers is you can delete them and adjust them as you need so for example if I wanted to get rid of that color adjustment, I just press the delete button here, it goes away. And if I want to edit it, simply double click on the icon here and it comes up and you can continue adjusting it. Now it's time to add some textures. And I'm going to start in the top left corner and I'm going to select the two gray rectangles there and I'm going to go to my styles panel and I'm going to load the essential palette here and click on sunshine. And as you can see, they're instantly applied. Now I'm going to, I want to scale the texture up a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to select the fill tool and I'm just going to drag these arms here like so. That looks much better. Now I'm Next, going to select the other rectangles and go back to the styles panel. And I'm going to load up the vintage 70s colors and choose the heather color like so. And now I'm going to resize the texture like so. Next, I'm going to add some texture to the badge shape at the back here. So back to the styles panel and I'm going to use terracotta. Now you, you'll notice that the texture will apply at a different proportion on the shape because Affinity automatically reproportions any textures and effects using a style to the proportions of the shape that you're applying them to. But we can adjust that easily in a second. So let's say it's slightly out of proportion and to correct that we use the fill tool again and double click either one of these 
little lines here and as you can see it just adjusts it and then we're going to shrink that texture down to match roughly the proportions of the texture that we've put in already and then we're just going to repeat that process with these other shapes Now I'm going to have to go back a step because I've missed out a shape which should sit underneath these stripes. So in fact, I can just duplicate one of these. So I'm copying it and pasting it and then we'll just drag it into the other layer. I'm just going to upscale that. and then adjust the texture again. The next step is to delete sections of the main badge shape. And the reason we do this is um, to make the sort of lighting and 3D effect look a little better. So what we're going to do is just draw another square here and then we're going to select the square and the badge and we're going to press the subtract button as you can see the lighting suddenly looks better here the one downside with doing this is that it's reproportioned the texture again so we'll adjust that in a minute but we're just going to do a second square the other side like so and then we're going to repeat the process so press the subtract button and I'm sure you'll notice there that the inner glow that it has sort of appeared because that's now the edge of the shape rather than this area being the edge of the shape right so we're just going to correct the proportions of the texture there and we'll rotate it slightly that looks good and then we're going to do the same but with these star shapes so we're going to duplicate those and delete them from the background shape so okay I've got them all selected I'm going edit copy and edit paste now I'm going to knock out the top instances here because you don't need to see those and I'm selecting the bottom instances and the shape at the bottom and once again deleting the shape as you can see the effect has changed very subtly there now I think I would like to exaggerate the effects on these stars so I'm first of all going to merge them into one compound shape which means I can work on them all at once and to adjust the effects I'm just going to double click the effect icon here I'll zoom in so you can see and we're going to go to the inner shadow and we're going to up the radius as you can see you can see more of it there and also up the intensity a little bit and the opacity too maybe reduce the radius a little bit again there we are that just makes them that little bit less subtle now it's worth noting again at this stage that you have an outer shadow and an inner shadow um, and where you have two shapes that butt up against each other, for example, the terracotta colored shape and the star shape here, um, you have actually two overlapping effects. So you have the inner shadow of the terracotta shape and you have the outer shadow of the stars. So you may not want both. So I'm going to knock out the outer shadow and it just gives it a little more subtlety. Now I'm going to adjust these squares slightly because I want this line to line up with the star there so holding down the shift key and shrinking them down slightly like so as you can see we've got a little gap here but we're going to adjust all the edges so that we lose this overlapping shape now anyway so to do that I'm going to click the convert to curves button and then I'm just going to adjust the nodes like so this also means that the inner glow 
is more visible at the edge because the edge can be seen. So we're going to repeat that process with these other shapes that overlap the edge of the design. Now I've got one more shape that I want to knock out of this background shape, which is the star shaped curve here. So I'm copying it and pasting it and then dragging the copy down above the base shape there. Now I'm going to select both of them. There we go. And as you can see, the lighting just gets exaggerated there. And I think I'm going to do what I did before and knock out the outer shadow slightly there, just to make it a little subtler. And now I'm going to exaggerate some more of the effects, just to give it a little more depth. I think it would also be advisable to delete these stripes from the yellow stripes. So I'm going to copy the purple stripes and selecting the purple stripes and the yellow shape. I'm going to again press the subtract button and then just Scale the effects down a little bit there. Sorry, scale the pattern down. And I'm also going to rotate this pattern so it matches the same direction. I'm just going to exaggerate the inner shadow. There we go, just gives it a little more, bit more depth there. Just going to add a drop shadow to the outer stitching as well. So I'll press the effect button there and press the outer shadow and just the radius and the opacity a little bit. And the intensity slightly and click close. There's one final thing that I like to do on these designs and that's to make it a little bit more naturalistic um, by making the edges less even so how I do this is I take the node tool and I simply add a few nodes and I select every other one and I'm simply nudging it down and converting it to a smooth curve and as you can see that looks just a little bit better. So I'm just going to do that throughout. And there's the finished patch design. Make sure you head over to artifactsforge.com to check the full pack out. And if you have any questions about the pack or the tutorial, please send me an email or leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.